Thank you. So we got out here early this morning and picked up that same mob of goats that we were watching yesterday afternoon. They seem to be moving off the river. Um, they're going to feed across the flats and probably bed up on the next tree line over there. So we're just observing them at the moment. Our winds are pretty good. And then we might get over to that other tree line and try and pick them up as they come in and get a couple of nice ones to fill the freezer and cook up for lunch and dinner. Sit down. Nah. Sit down and like really like get in behind it and then, but like way behind, like get in right here and then pretend to put your hand on it. <laughs> Just be like, hey, how Look you doing? This monster nanny goat we shot. Like, oh, hey, no. morning guys, how you going? <laughs> and James said, hold tight, let's just wait here and see what happens. They ended up splitting into two groups. The bigger of the group ended up betting around a tree and about five or six kept feeding towards us and we were kind of in the open, would you say? Yeah, I had a couple of trees breaking up our outline, but fairly open. There's not a lot of ground cover here, so. And that brown one was on to us from. Yeah, there was one in the mob that I don't know whether she picked up the reflection off the camera or maybe a bow limb or something like that, but she'd spotted us when we were still probably 100 away and she was just fixed on us the whole time, so. We've got a few recipes we're going to cook up. We'll do some back straps, maybe throw a back leg in the camp oven got some veggies, we've got some spices, we've got a few things to mess around with. So um, yeah, we'll butcher up and get her on the flames. Mm. Boom. Well done. Just trying to work it out. Setting up for a little cooking video. Got the goat there. Fire going, game bag in the tree, camera there, little grill there. Just gonna cook up and have some lunch. Okay. Cooking the heart first. Heart first. Just cleaning a plate so you don't clean. Now it's documented. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is, um, you can see where all these these are all the valves. It's actually, they order. Um, they're full of um, cartilage so they're quite chewy um, also this fat at the top unlike sort of beef fat it doesn't gelatinize when you cook it so generally the first thing I actually do is just cut the top off um, next thing is you want to do you sort of open it up any of these little stringy bits that's actually the valves in your heart so remove that and then I just generally cut it into sort of thick pieces like that so as you can see, especially with the goat, like you don't really get much. Um, that's the only pieces we get. But all I do to that now is just put salt and pepper on it um, and then just whack it on the hot plate. So. so I only need oh, maybe a minute on each side. 
just have them rare in the middle. No need to overcook them. Well, time to sample what we got this morning. Can't get any better. It's so good. They need a bigger heart. I don't know if I'm going to save any for you, Tommy. You better. <laughs> uh, so the next next thing we're going to do for our lunch is um, just cut out some back straps and going to make sort of a kebab style. Um, but I'll just show you how I cut the back strap out and just a, one trick for cleaning it that just makes everything so much easier. The back strap starts here um, and runs all the way down. Once it gets to about the behind the front leg, it actually the muscle that is known as the back strap actually changes and forms another muscle um, that runs all the way up the neck. So the back strap you're sort of looking at is about this long, but um, here this white line is um, the spinous processes of the vertebrae. So it runs in sort of a little little gap in there, go all the way down on one side, and then generally I'll go across. And the hardest bit is just starting it. <laughs> And what you can see it just on the edge here so it makes it easier just to do a cut along the edge as well don't cut yourself and cut towards yourself like what i just did so once you've started at the end here it's it's pretty easy you just get your knife in underneath it um, there's little ridges that go like that along the first couple of vertebrae and if you've done your first cut right which i sort of half haven't you can just sort of wiggle your knife in along there and it should just come out nicely. So if you if you feel dressing your game um, and you haven't gutted them, there's trans or it's called the transverse processes of the vertebrae that come out here. So it sits along that, but underneath in here, if you go around the other side, is actually where um, the guts would sit. So um, you just got to be mindful how deep. Like if you're cutting that way, um, you don't want to go through that because you end up popping the guts. Um, the ribeyes sit internally on here, so. Um, on a bigger animal, or we'll take it out of this one just because we've, um, you know, brought the whole animal out. But um, if you're going to take the ribeyes, you don't want to go through that section and, and actually nick um, the guts because obviously then you ruin them. So about here, if tummy comes in a bit closer, um, you'll see that the muscle actually changes into another muscle here. Um, so the back strap sort of dwindles off and thins out just there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably just cut it off so that there is back strap, obviously pretty small in a goat, but massive in a samba deer. Um, and next thing I'll just show you how to clean it properly, but just show you an easy way to get rid of this silver skin on the top of it. So what you want to do now is don't take a, a nice sharp boning knife. Um, you actually want to take something that's, that's I wouldn't say blunt, but um, what you do is um, if you cut straight across and then you're left you can sort of see it in there. Um, you're left with all the silver skin on the other side. And what you want to do is almost cut transversely straight across it and sort of push. And you can just see all that coming away nicely. And finish at that end. So pretty much no wastage there. Just missed a little bit of fat on that end. Same thing, hold this and just push. For years when I was a little kid, I used to um, try and trim it all off and you just waste so much of it. Found using this, got it. This method, I just wasted a whole lot less. Two bits, ready to cook, ready to marinate, whatever you want to do, freeze it, give it to someone, I don't know, but don't know if we'll need all this, but gonna make sort of a kebab. So also gonna grab an onion, just gonna keep it like that. Um, and the next thing I want is some capsicum. Just sort of cut it into sections. Beautiful. Righto. So now all we got to do is just a section of meat, grab a little bit of onion, whack that in there. So what we also got is um, goats actually don't lay intramuscular fat like bovines or cattle. Um, they lay visceral fat so in inside the um, abdominal cavity. So what I've done is while I was butchering it, um, just stolen some of that visceral fat um, which will just help prevent everything from drying out get hot, lots of fat in it, it should just help. Salivating over here, bro. So we finished this and <clears throat> I wasn't confident in the fat actually staying on. 
I thought it might break off because it can be brittle, so I've got insurance. So this lovely big thing is the called the Omentum, um, which is just like a fatty sheet that line or it doesn't line abdominal cavity, but it's it's within the abdominal cavity and the intestines and sort of stomach sit sit inside that. So what I'm going to do is actually to protect the meat inside and make sure it stays moist, um, wrap it in this. So what we'll do now is, let's keep it like that. I'll just go and chuck it on the fire. We'll just cook that slowly on the on the hot plate, on the hot plate instead of um, it's almost frying it really, trying to keep it moist. So the last thing I've just done, the fat um, is pretty much rendered all off. Um, I've just mixed up a concoction of um, lemon juice, rosemary, salt, pepper, and a little bit of that lard. Um, so just going to go in and pour that over the top. So we're just going to leave that for a minute. Last little salt. That's it. Goat kebab. Oh. That doesn't need to go with it. <laughs> little kebab cooked on the fire. Get rid of these fatty bits. Oh. 10 out of 10. That's beautiful.